filming on location today in La Luz Canyon, outside of High Rolls, New Mexico, at an elevation of about 7,500 feet above sea level and an ambient air temperature today of about 37 degrees. Beautiful blue day. Today is going to be the first of two videos on water, that magic elixir of life. In the first video, we're gonna discuss carrying your water and how to replenish it under normal circumstances. And the second video will be more of an extreme situation type thing, how you're gonna replenish your water supply under non-normal circumstances. So let's start with our carrying vessels. Hi folks, Dan with High Country back at you with another video. As I said in the leader, we're going to discuss water today, and we're going to start with how you carry your water and some possible methods for how you're going to transport it with you. Remember that you're going to need a minimum of a gallon a day to just kind of exist on this planet. When you're doing heavy hiking, you'll need more than that. And when you're adding a couple of cups of water to, say, freeze-dried rations, yet even more. Under certain circumstances, with coffee and consumption and food, you may need two gallons a day. So it's something to consider, especially out here in the desert where we are obsessed with water. So let's start from the beginning. This is the oldest method that I've got on display here, and this is a classic cowboy canteen like you've seen in all the old movies, okay? Nothing fancy about it. They're uh, round, fairly flat, cap on top, and a shoulder strap, so you can throw it up here and carry it on your shoulder, hook it on your horse, or whatever. As I said, you've seen them in all the old movies, hook them around the strap and of uh, uh, saddle, and off they go. Now, these do have an interesting advantage in that they have a cloth cover on the outside, and you can wet this down, and through the process of evaporation, it will help cool your water, which is kind of a cool feature. They're a little bit heavy, and because they've got this long strap, a little bit unwieldy, and this strap will cause them to bang against you as you move, and anything that's moving against you as you hike will wind up being a serious irritant and can actually beat sore spots onto you after a while. So these will work. If you've got one, don't trouble yourself. This will certainly get you into the hobby. It's just not the most optimum choice at this point in time. These are military canteens, which is the next type. This is an aluminum Vietnam era canteen. I was never a huge fan of the aluminums. They tend to corrode a little bit, um, but they are what they are. They'll carry about a quart of water and they've got their own little scabbard uh, to hook onto your belt through a series of clips back here. They work fine, they're a little bit heavy, and again, they're, they're hard to ridges, they'll only fit into certain areas. And because they fit on your belt, they're gonna do this all day, every day, somewhat like these, and they'll beat on you and just wear you down. But they are a serviceable answer if you need a way to carry water. This is the more modern version. This is a plastic military canteen, fits into the same scabbard, uh, where this one was metal and you could actually put it on the edge of a fire and warm your water. You can't do that with the plastic, but they are considerably lighter. Hold the same amount of water, relatively durable. I occasionally, occasionally normally use one of these wrapped up in a t-shirt as my pillow for sleeping at night. So they work very well for that. Here's the more modern version of the canteen. This is aluminum and this is plastic, but these are just water bottles. The top screw on, they've got an O-ring seal, and you can put what you want into them. I normally use the aluminum ones for fuel. Uh, this one actually says fuel on it, so I don't get it confused. And the plastic ones for water. Now, an interesting thing here, these will come in generally, generally, two kinds of threads on the top. One is Nalgene and one is SIG, one is SIG. They are not compatible with each other, nor are they compatible with most threads you see in the regular world. So that is something to keep in mind. But these are inexpensive, and this is one of those places where you don't have to go to the big places. North Face and REI sell these for big money and Box Market X sells them for nothing. Box Market X will work just fine. Don't, don't be fooled into thinking you need the expensive ones here. But just another method for transporting your water. Interestingly, these Nalgene threads will screw onto the bottom of a number of purifiers and filters so you can purify and directly into this container. Next, we've got what I consider sort of the state of the art, and this is the bladder system. They call them hydration systems, but as I said in an earlier video, I don't hydrate, I drink. Now, basically what these are is a giant plastic bag. That's really all a bladder system is. There it is right there. It's got a hose attached to the bottom to give it gravity pressure and a fill nozzle attached to the top, but it's just a heavy plastic bag. Now, this one is made by Camelback. I've had it over 20 years. I've had excellent service with it. This is the original bladder. I have had to replace the mouthpiece because they do wear and start to dribble. But this has been an excellent unit. Now I understand some of the modern Camelbacks don't have as good a reputation and that's unfortunate, but I've been very, very happy with Camelback. Now there are a number of brands out there, Dromedary, Camelback and Dromedary, nobody ripped anyone off there, huh? Um, there's a bunch of them. 
What I do not recommend if you're gonna go with one of these bladder systems is this super cheap because they will leak at the seams. They just don't hold up. I had a Coleman that was given to me. It, it lasted one trip. I was not impressed with it. These are neat because you can carry them individually. They've got their own built-in backpack so you can throw it on and carry it if you're day hiking. You can run it inside your backpack where it'll stay out of the way. If you're trying to keep your water cool, putting it inside your backpack is nice in the summer. In the winter, when you're concerned about things potentially freezing, if you put this up on top of your pack, this black surface will prevent that from happening. It's amazing how much heat these really pick up. Last but certainly not least, just the regular water or soda bottle. It's something to consider. These conveniently fit in the packs on most of your backpack, in the pouches on most of your backpacks or your cargo shorts or that kind of thing. They're everywhere. They're relatively durable. They're cheap. If you buy water, it comes in the bottle. So you, you kind of do away with all of this. But remember, you need a gallon minimum a day, so that's quite a few of these. I will give you one piece of advice. If you're going to carry a water or a soda bottle, get a good quality one. Some of the really cheap by the case water bottles are so flimsy, there's just nothing to them, and they just won't sustain themselves on a trip. You crease them a couple of times, they start to leak, now you're losing water and you're wetting down your gear. But don't think you have to have this just to go backpacking. You can do it with just water bottles that you have at home right now. So there's a quick demo of the ways you might carry your water with you. Now let's move on. Uh, when you leave the car or leave your house, obviously you're going to be full on water. What are you going to do when you get out on the trail and it's time to replenish? So let's go to that. All right, folks, we, the water that we brought with us is exhausted. We've come upon a water source, a creek, a stream, a cattle tank, whatever it might be, a little pond, and now it's time to get more water. So what are we going to do? Well, the most common uh, method in the days past would be to boil water, and that would make it safe. It will certainly kill the organisms. Uh, I don't have a boiling pot here because I think I don't need to explain to y'all how to boil water. I suspect you can manage that on your own. Take the water, put it in a pot, put it over a heat source, bring it to a full boil, and keep it there for five minutes. This, some people will tell you three, some people will tell you five. I go to five just to be safe. Keep it at a rolling bowl for five minutes, let it cool off, and it will have killed all the organisms in there and made it safe to drink. Now that doesn't mean it's going to be tasty. Rocks, sticks, dirt, murk, whatever else might be in there, unpleasant flavors, is still there. Just because you boiled it and made it safe doesn't mean it's going to be good. So there's a, a way to deal with that, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Here we are in the modern era, and we have all this wonderful technology to help us. So there are really a couple of ways to get your water to taste better, or, or to get your water drinkable short of the boil. This is what's called potable agua. They are tablets, they are chlorine dioxide, I believe, and you pour them into your water, you put them into your water, shake it up, let it sit 45, 30, 45 minutes, and it will make your water safe to drink, just like boiling. Again, like boiling, it does not take the unpleasantness out of your water, it just makes it safe to drink. Um, these are fine, there's nothing wrong with them. They give a very strong flavor, uh, somewhat like the old iodine tablets used to, a different flavor, but very strong, very pronounced, not particularly pleasant. And again, there's still dirt, rock, sticks, hair, and everything else in it. So this is the modern method of boiling. Given my choice, I'd probably boil because it doesn't taste as bad as this. Here's another method. These are water filters. This one happens to be a Sawyer. I have no complaint with Sawyer as a system. This is my unit. I carry it in my survival vest as a backup. Uh, a lot of people use these as a primary. Here's the thing. This is a filter. And there's a difference between a filter and a purifier. Not all filters look like this. Some of them will have handles that you pump just like this purifier does. But a filter will remove 99.9% .9 of the bad things out there. And that's, that's what you want. You want all of it out of there. It doesn't remove as fine of things as a purifier does, which is why I don't generally like to use it as my primary source. It also doesn't remove things like pesticides, herbicides, diesel fuel. Some of the things that you encounter out here where I live on a fairly regular basis, a filter will not remove from your water. Now, depending on where you are, that may or may not be an issue. Where I am, it's an issue often enough that I don't carry a filter as my primary. But I do carry a filter as my backup, as my secondary, because filters and purifiers do fail. I've, it's happened to me on the trail three times. It does happen. So don't assume that just because something's brand new, you're going to get all the water you need out of this trip. That's not the case. Now, here's the interesting thing about the Sawyer filter as opposed to some of the other pump filter systems. You can screw this one directly onto a soda bottle or to a water bottle and drink directly out of that bottle. You can just scoop water out of a lake or whatever, screw it on here and drink and it will take the unpleasantness and the bad things out of it so that it's safe to drink without the odd flavor that you get from um, purification tablets or from just mud and sort of things in the water. 
Here is my one concern with, 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 with this sort of a system. As a backpacker, you don't want to carry dead weight. You don't want to carry things that aren't going to be beneficial to you. I, I, carrying water is already a burden. It's a little over eight pounds per gallon, so it does add to your load. However, if I'm going to carry water, I want, if I'm going to carry anything, I want it to be a usable resource. And the same thing is true with water. If I'm going to carry water, I want it to be a usable resource. And dirty water is not. As I said, filters and purifiers do break. So if you get yourself a couple of gallons of dirty water and you're dragging it down the trail and this fails, and this is your primary system, now you have nothing but dirty water. You are reduced to boiling or pills with all that goes with that. And I just, I don't understand the point of carrying dirty water. I, I just, I can't get my head around it. If I'm gonna carry water, I'm gonna purify it and carry good drinking water. That way, if my filter breaks in the middle, I know how much water I've got. This is how much water I've got. That's it. I just, I don't understand the point of carrying dirty water. I do, however, very much like this as a survival, as a backup. For many years, I carried what was called a survival straw. The company has gone out of business, but they were a yellow canister about the size of a film canister with a tube on the end, and you just stuck it right in the water and drank. I bought five of them, carried them for probably 18 or 19 years until they finally just ran out, and, and as I said, the company's gone, and this is my replacement for it. And for that purpose, I think they are spectacular. You can put it on a bottle, as I said. You can put it right down into a water source and drink right out of it. There's a tube that goes on the bottom so you can fish down into holes and drink directly from the water supply. And that is a nice feature. And these are quality units. I have no complaint with the Sawyer system for what it is. I just have a complaint with the whole filter system in general. So that's a Sawyer. Not a bad unit. There are some other systems out there like this that I haven't tried, but I do recommend the Sawyer. They're a quality piece of equipment. Now this is a purifier. And as I said, a purifier as opposed to a filter. A purifier takes out essentially all of the bad stuff. Now it will not take out radioactivity. It is not a desalinator. You can't make drinking water out of the ocean. But it takes out Gerarda, Gerardia, Cryptosporidia, viruses, cysts, certain organic chemicals like pesticides, herbicides. Um, I, it will remove some types of lead, although not all. It will remove arsenic in certain circumstances. It is a purifier. I love this unit dearly. I've had this one 20 plus years. I've, I've replaced the cartridge many times and I've replaced the rubber elbow, but the pump mechanism has served me well. If you run clean water through it, they're good for over 100 gallons. If you're sucking through the mud, because it's such a fine membrane in there and it's a glass matrix system, they plug up pretty quick. You can backwash them, but they will plug up pretty quick. Basically, the principle is you stick this on the end of your nozzle here. You throw this down into your water source. You put your Nalgene or Camelback or whatever onto the bottom and you pump away. And the water that comes out of here is ready to go. Uh, you pump about, on these systems it was about 1.8 gallons a minute. I understand on the new filters it's about 2 gallons a minute, which is more than enough water. 2 gallons a minute, I mean, be patient. You're on a backpacking trip, you're not at a board meeting here. I recommend purifiers. They are more expensive and they do not last as long. What's your body worth? What's your health worth? There is very little in life more unpleasant than a bad case of the runs on the trail. I don't know. It's just me. Am I paranoid? Probably. Living out here where I do and having the exposure to some of the things that I do and knowing that it may be a long way <laughs> to the next water source in the desert, I am a little bit paranoid. So I carry a purifier. But there you go. You've got boiling, you've got tablets, you've got filters, and you've got purifiers. In most places in the world, I think a filter will be fine for you. I am a little paranoid, as I said, and obsessive about water because I'm a desert kid, so I carry a purifier. Now, there are other methods for doing this in a more emergency situation. As I said, we would discuss some of those in a second video, and some of those will help remove some of the particulate and the taste from water that you've boiled or used purification tablets in. I hope this has been an interesting overview for you of some of the methods out there for carrying and for treating your water. Uh, my second video on this should be out fairly soon. I'm going to get back on a roll now that the weather's getting a little bit better. I hope it's been beneficial. If it has, I hope you'll come back and see us again. I'm Dan from High Country. We'll catch you next time.